We continue to study the doctrine of mens rea, or culpability. We will look at the subject through the lens of the Model Penal Code. The Model Penal Code reduces all the various common law culpability concepts to a short list of four. Purpose, knowledge, recklessness, and negligence. They are ordered in a descending hierarchy. Purpose at the top, knowledge, recklessness, and negligence at the bottom. This means that where the prosecution proves purpose, it automatically also proves all of the lesser three types of culpability. Suppose a statute makes it a criminal offense recklessly to do something, X. The prosecution can convict a defendant by showing that she did X purposely or knowingly. The defendant, in other words, will not be heard to complain she, that she can't be convicted of doing X recklessly if, in fact, she did X purposely. A higher culpability satisfies the need to prove a lower, but, of course, it does not go the other way. If a statute makes it a criminal offense to do X purposely, it will not suffice to show that the defendant was merely reckless. The reasoning behind the hierarchy is that the higher forms of culpability speak worse of the actor, in general anyway. For example, someone who purposely kills another person does a worse deed than someone who killed without meaning to, but recklessly. We will see that the culpability hierarchy is put to work in grading the punishments assigned to different crimes. For the same forbidden act, one who acted purposely will be punished more severely than one who was reckless, and the merely negligent actor may not be held liable at all. When the law provides that negligence will suffice to establish an element of an offense, such element also is established if a person acts purposely, knowingly, or recklessly. When recklessness suffices to establish an element, such element also is established if a person acts purposely or knowingly. When acting knowingly suffices to establish an element, such element is also established if a person acts purposely. The idea behind the culpability hierarchy is to facilitate the introduction of proportionality in the criminal law. How much punishment is justified? Recall that both retributivists and utilitarians accept the principle of proportionality. Both theories accept that punishment must fit the crime and that excessive punishment is never justified. Some acts are regrettable, but should not be punished unless the actor was culpable, and the degree of culpability has a bearing on the gravity of the crime. Assigning a rough definition to each of the different culpability concepts will bring this aspect out more clearly. Purpose means the actor wants to do or to bring about X. X can stand for any material element of the offense charged. Purpose refers to the actor's aim or goal. It may only be a step on the way to an ultimate goal, as when someone steals a loaf of bread to feed a hungry child but it must be something the actor wants to happen on the occasion. Knowledge is classically defined as justified true belief. We can say that knowledge exists where the actor warrantably believes that she is doing or bringing about X. And of course, X is done or brought about. Recklessness may be present whether or not X is done or brought about. The reckless actor is aware she's risking doing or bringing about some acts. Lastly, negligence need not involve the actor's awareness, but the actor ought to be aware that she's risking doing or bringing about something. The easiest pair to distinguish is purpose and negligence. As Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. once observed, even a dog knows the difference between being tripped over and being kicked. Another example, taking someone's backpack by careless accident might not be a crime at all, but taking it on purpose is a crime. 
Different crimes are often distinguished solely with reference to the kind of culpability with which an act was performed or a result was caused. The difference between the middle pair of culpability concepts, knowledge and recklessness, sometimes befuddles even judges. Let's take a closer look. The obvious difference between knowledge and recklessness is that knowledge necessarily involves true belief, while recklessness does not. The reckless actor is aware of a substantial risk. The reckless actor need not believe that that risk will ripen into a bad result. The risk need not ripen into harm, although quite often it does. The Model Penal Code defines recklessness in terms of awareness of a substantial and unjustifiable risk. Knowledge also involves awareness of a high probability of something being so. But for something to be known, it must be so, and it must be believed so. In our next video, we look at a case in which a court struggled with the meaning of the concept of knowledge.